What you need is purpose. You need discipline. You need hard work. You need things to do which are going to benefit you and others around you. You need duty. You need obligations. And you need performance metrics. You need people around you who are going to hold you accountable. You don't need to be waking up thinking about fun. You're nobodies. You're not important. Nobody knows who you are. You're not physically strong. You're not financially wealthy. You have bigger concerns. You're obsessed with this idea of fun. Hey, what are we going to do this weekend? We need to have some fun. Do you? Do you need fun? Do you deserve it? Really? Have you actually gone out there in the universe and made a mark large enough that you're allowed some time off to have some fun? You don't deserve any fun. You don't need any fun. You have work to do. Your obsession with fun is holding you back. These things you think are fun aren't fun. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. You have to get up and do it. Just like a video game, you start with fucking zero. You have to decide if you want to complete it, you have to upgrade your character. So I find it amazing that men are going to play video games and fuck about and waste their time instead of upgrading their character. Everyone knows what to do. You know what you have to do. You're right. If you had to become the most dangerous, intelligent, respectable man on the planet, you know you're supposed to go to the gym. You know you're supposed to train, learn how to fight. You know, you know all these things. You don't do them. That's your, that's your decision. It's your prerogative. I didn't, I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to do it all. I decided all. And every single man watching this can do the exact same thing, which is why I have very little pity. As a man, you need to have struggle in your life. And I want you guys to actually sit and think, what struggle are you going through daily? What struggle are you undertaking? What struggle are you trying to overcome? Because you should make a list of them. I can know for myself every single day I wake up and I train physically. Every single day I have to go through X amount of physical pain when my day begins. That is a struggle that must be completed. Then I must try and keep my massive empire online, see my children, take care of everybody. There's struggle involved. My life is difficult. Difficult lives are fulfilling. Because we used to have to hunt and fish and go out there and go through difficulty to survive. And I often see that when I speak to people who are too comfortable, they end up being unhappy. Yeah. You can't entertain yourself to happiness. You must earn happiness. You must climb a mountain. You must struggle yourself to happiness. That's extremely important. There must be physical, mental, social, creative, some kind of spiritual struggle. And those things being satisfied is what's going to satisfy you. It's like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a mathematical equation. You solve the equation, you get a Bitcoin. Life is very much the same. There's struggles, there's difficulties which you have undertaken, which you have adopted to try and complete. And when you finish those things, then you get satisfaction as a reward. That's the Bitcoin. The only other alternative to that to feel good is hedonism, which is drugs and alcohol. And that's not going to satisfy you for very long. It's also going to destroy your life. So it's extremely important. I think that a lot of people don't understand that it's all of the challenges and struggles that's going to make them, it's either going to make or break them. I read, I don't read studies very often, but I was sent a study about stress from somebody. It's probably the best study I ever read. And it's talked about the placebo effect of stress. And it said that there, they took some of the most stressed people in the world, CEOs, etc., And the ones who believed that stress was really bad for them were dying earlier because of the cortisol inside of their blood. And they said stress would be bad from there having heart attacks. But the ones who believed that stress was good for them and it made them perform, I perform under pressure, stress is good for me, they were living longer. Mm -hmm. So the same drug inside of their blood, how they framed it inside of their mind had different effects on their body. So from that point onwards, even though I already thought this way, I knew I was the right way. I knew it was the right way to think innately because I've done pretty good in life that way. But this confirmed it. Every time I feel stressed or under pressure, I get excited. I, I, I hate to not be stressed. I wake up and I'm like, everything's fucked. Good. Yes. <laughs> like, that's just how I am. Right. But it's, it's how you adopt it. It's how you look at the problems and how you use them to fuel you. So the question was, what's the problem for the average man today? What's the biggest problem? I think there's a whole host of problems, but what you have to do is frame it inside of your mind and understand that all of those problems are going to allow you, give you the fuel, the unlimited motivation that you need to become a successful and, and, and beautiful individual. If you frame it in the right way, if you take a man, and give him a life shielded from problems and he never has any to face, I guarantee you he's terrible at being a man. The best men in the world have gone through shit. That's just, that's why women love scars. Because they didn't kill you. That's the whole point of it, right? So the best thing you can do as a man is look and go, okay, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard. I feel negative because these are all so difficult. I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. Let me internalize all of that and turn it into a superpower. Let me become genuinely uncomfortable with my situation in life and go and fix things. Because like I said, the universe is absolutely and utterly very giving. And if you truly hated being in the position you were in, you wouldn't be there very long. So I think that the, the, the number one problem with, with the world today and the biggest problem that men face isn't the problems themselves. It's just the way that they are been taught to mentally frame issues. People think when bad things happen to them that somehow they're a victim to the universe and bad things only happen to me and this is so terrible. They don't understand that bad things happen to everybody and the most successful person you know had all those probably...
maybe even worse. At least the same bad things happened to them. They just framed it differently and used it. That's that's the difference. So I, I don't pray for an easy life. I, I pray for a life of difficulty that allows me to become a better and better person. I, I pray to become more competent to handle problems. I pray to put myself in a position where if the mass media machine attempts its very best to destroy my life, I can laugh and smile from my villa in Dubai. This is who I pray to become. I don't pray that nobody hurts me. I pray to be able to fight. So it's just a different mentality. Join our platform, visionversity.in, which will help you to be better version of your life. You will find your hopes, confidence, motivation, and like-minded people as talented as you are. We focus to bring all the craziest people into Visionversity to do extraordinary things in the world. If you tried your best, that's all that matters. The best is all you can do. If you tried your best, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if you lose if you tried your best. Most people have heard that before. But there is a secret to the universe that most don't know. If you actually try your best, you can't lose. Not pretend to try your best, not try the best, not try your best 90% of the time, not try your best with excuses. If you genuinely try your best all of the time, all day, every day, it's impossible to lose. So when people say, if you tried your best, it's okay to lose, that is a logic fail. Because if you lost, you didn't try your best in the first place. If you actually try your best, it is impossible to fail in this life. God is watching and he rewards those who want it the most. If you want it the most, you can have it. It's a competition. Every dollar you want, the house you want, the car you want, other people want. You have to win. You have to want it the most and genuinely do your best because most people aren't capable of doing their best anymore. To get up every day, whether they feel like it or not, and perform regardless. That is the secret. You cannot fail if you try your best. So if you don't have the car you want, the woman you want, the relationship you want, the friends you want, the house you want, you haven't been trying your best. Because I guarantee you, the second you do, you'll have all of it. Why would you have a mental model or a mentality that made you anything less? In the ultra competitive world that we've just discussed, discussing that everybody wants the things you have, why would you absorb information or construct a mental model that doesn't allow you to be as competitive as possible? I am a feared competitor in anything I do. Anyone who's up against me at anything is going to feel a degree of nervousness just because it's me. It doesn't matter what it is. If you say, look, you're going to go learn how to play piano and you're going to play against someone else who's never played piano and you're going to learn and that guy's Andrew Tate. You're going to be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't even play piano. But part of them is going to be like, oh, not Tate. Even though, even though I have no piano experience, because they just know me. They know my mindset. They know my determination. They know I'm stubborn. They know I don't quit. They know I'm, they know I'm going to win. That's just who I am. So I've constructed a mental model that allows me to be competent and to always succeed. And that's how I've come to the conclusions I've come to. And I truly, once again, don't understand how people go through the world without, with any other mental model. I get asked all the time, what do you feel? Or what about happiness or depression? That, that doesn't even, how I feel doesn't cross my mind. I don't know how else to explain it. There are days where I'm pissed off or sad or happy. It doesn't cross my mind. It's just like I woke up, whatever mood I happen to be in, I have things I need to do. It's a busy day. Zuby's here soon. I need to go training before he gets here. I had a meeting with the bank at 7.15 a.m. I have shit to do. Like I didn't cross my mind if I was happy, sad, excited. I just had to work. So. I, I, I think my mental model to a degree, I'm certainly not a person who doesn't feel emotions because we're all human. I certainly do. But I've, ne I've never prioritized them in any regard. I haven't built a mental model that affects, I haven't put them in, in the middle of my mental model and then affected my actions based on how I feel for each one. It's absolutely and completely the opposite. I would love to do a podcast on a day where I'm particularly sad and a podcast on a day when I'm particularly happy. And I guarantee you, you wouldn't be able to tell the fucking difference. So <laughs> that's what allows me to be competitive, yeah. right? Because if you're competitive, if you want to be the most competitive pet predator on the planet, you have to be able to hunt in the day and the night. You have to be able to do both. You have to be able to perform when you're happy and sad. You can't, you can't only be able to perform when you're happy. You can't only go to the gym when you're motivated. You can't only be a competent person when your life's going well, because when your life's not going well, you're no longer competent. Then you're going to lose to people like me. And it's player versus player. If you're the kind of person who can only do well when you're happy and you're competing against someone like me who can do well all the fucking time, guess what? You lose. Mm -hmm. So my mental model, the answer is most of my opinions are just based around constructing a mental model that allows me to be brutally competitive. Yeah. It's why I say depression isn't real. I've argued this point endlessly. And I try and explain to people, but they're not smart enough to understand that I don't care if I'm wrong. 
I don't care. I, get it. I am more competitive as an individual if I don't believe I can become depressed. So I don't give a fuck if I'm right or wrong because no matter what bad happens to me in my life, even if, heaven forbid, the worst things on earth that could happen happen to me, I could never become clinically depressed because I would never self-diagnose myself as clinically depressed because I don't believe in it. Yeah. I believe that I am currently sad, but I have work to do and eventually I will feel better. I will never get to a point of absolute desperation and kill myself because I don't, I'm never going to get to a point of hopelessness because I don't believe in the idea of hopelessness. You cannot try and make me adopt thinking that will reduce my competitiveness as an individual. So I don't give a fuck if I'm wrong. I don't believe in it. That's it. End of story. So I don't believe in things that take power away from me. I don't believe in things that make me less competitive. And I don't adopt mental models that make me less competitive. Every single mental model I have are the most efficient ones I could find. So the mental model I found that if I adopt, I become a more fearsome predator. That's it. So this is how I've come to all of my conclusions as an individual. I literally, I don't know how I function in society. I think that life is very, very hard for a man. It was certainly very, very hard for me. I can't imagine having no mental resilience. I can't imagine being that fragile. I can't imagine being that offendable. I can't imagine believing there are systems which are going to oppress me and prevent me from ever becoming everything I want to be. I can't imagine being that way. If I were to try and absorb all those mentalities and, and then live a normal life, I don't think I could do it. I literally, there's a reason why these people end up on ADHD, yeah, to, to the anxiety, depression, and I get it, because it's just suicide. It's men, it's literally mental suicide. People are afraid of accepting there's a problem because then they know they have a responsibility yeah, for fixing gotta, it. Yeah. And they don't want to do anything, one, because they're lazy, and two, because they're afraid they might lose. So they'd rather pretend there's no problem at all. And I think I often say to people in a lot of my videos about a lot of other subjects that it's not always the winning and the losing. It's it's the fighting in the first place. And there's plenty of men in history you remember who ended up losing in the end. Napoleon, for example, who still fought, which is why they mattered. It's not if you're only going to fight when you're guaranteed to win, then no bravery is required. And you have to fight so that you can look back on your life and feel happy that you tried to do something when you knew it was going on before it was too late. Forget about the winning and losing for now. Focus on the fight. You must wait for the moment when the opponent's mind is scattered and strike without hesitation. If you do not overcome your tendency to give up so easily, your life will lead to nothing. Objectify your demons so you control them instead of them controlling you. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. You have to train your mind to be stronger than your emotions, especially your impulses, or else you're going to lose yourself. You will only be found by the devil once you are lost, and he will lead you to hell. Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by men who kept fighting when there seemed to be no hope at all. I think it's a good motto, perhaps, for life, for everyone who's watching this. I heard it during a boxing match, and I think it was between Evander Holyfield against some guy who's not nearly as well known. And Holyfield was losing, and then he starts swinging, hitting the guy. And the commentator said, suddenly the champion returns with initiative and vengeance. That's a good slogan for life. You should wake up, look in the mirror, and say, suddenly the champion returns with initiative and vengeance. That's a good way to start your day every single day. Yeah, it is. Initiative and vengeance to become the best possible version of yourself. It's very important, and this is the last piece of advice I want to give to people at home. A lot of people go through life with a very average attitude, and they wait for their one big break. But you have to build your big break, and you're going to do that with a thousand tiny victories. I'd never make fun of someone who hasn't got a choice. I wouldn't make fun of someone born with one. I have a choice, though. But if, you, if, if you've right. made a fucking decision to be less than you should be, that I believe you should be mocked for that decision. I agree. I I feel like, yeah, because like you're not living up to your full potential. Like it's your choice to basically not live up to your full potential. Completely. And me as a man, when I put myself through hell, when I have had such exacting, such stringent standards for myself, why would I then have less exacting, stringent standards on the people I meet? Why would I put myself through hell, be me, and then meet someone who didn't put themselves through hell and then treat them like my equal? No, fuck you. I suffered when you didn't, so you're not my equal, because you decided not to suffer. You have enjoyed comfort when I haven't, and that's fine, but don't expect me to look at you as my equal, because you're not. I'll snap your fucking neck. I, I can't imagine a, a mind frame or a mindset where I want to do something and can't do it. Right. So it's, it's, it's almost dis difficult for me to answer that question, because if you have that kind of mind, if your mind is so fundamentally broken that you cannot do with your own mind what you want to do. Right. You know, like that, then you're, then you're just fucked, right? Life is hierarchical. There's always going to be kings and there's always going to be peasants. If you have a mind that you can't control, then you're never going to be a king. You're going to be a peasant. That's your life. You have a peasant's life ahead of you and that's your, that's your destiny. Enjoy.
right? There's always been peasants. That's life. But I, I believe that I mean, the most important thing you can do as a man is, is to gain control of your own, is to gain control of your mind. Once you have control of your mind, life is so ridiculously easy. It's, it's so ridiculously easy. It's so easy to be in. People say to me, Tate, you're in good shape. But all you do is drink vodka and travel the world. You're never even home. You never even have a gym. How do you do it? It's ridiculously easy if you control your mind. If I decide to do a thousand push-ups, I'll do them. Maybe I have to do them one at a time. Maybe I'll get tired. Maybe I need a break. I'm going to do a thousand because I said I'm going to do a thousand. It's not fucking hard. Everyone knows what they're supposed to do. Once you control your mind, it's easy, right? Getting over a breakup with that bitch. You miss that girl. You're upset. You miss her with all your heart. Da, da, da. But once you realize she's gone, if you control your mind, she's gone now. She's gone now. going to miss her. That's a shame. Off to the gym. <laughs> but like it, you, you either control your mind or you don't. And, and this, all of these things stem from the same problem. It's something you can do. It's something that is learned. It's something that is taught. But it's, it, it's something that I needed to survive. So for me, it's easy, right? That's all I've ever known. Right. But people have like, now they don't need it to survive, so they never develop the skill. That's just how it works. At the end of World War II, when men seen, seen, when men went to Europe and saw unspeakable horrors at the end of World War II, did they all come home and need therapy or did they all come home and get back to life? Back to life. Because, because that was, everyone was taught to have a mind that they control because they needed it to survive. There's no one else. That's, that's how life worked back then. So how do you find happiness? Happiness is in struggle. The struggle and the size of the struggle you're facing, along with how important it is and how important you feel it is deep in your heart, is directly correlated to how successful and how happy you're going to feel all of the time. Struggle is extremely important for a man. You should be looking to inject struggle into your life permanently. We talked about this in the past emergency meeting because if you're injecting struggle and that struggle solving those problems lead to a positive place once you become addicted to it you're going to become a machine of monumental achievement there are some very simple basic things you can do weight training chess having debates trying your very best to take care of your mother retire her make sure that your people who you love are taken care of you need goals and resistance and something to fight against to live well because the distance between pain and joy is what we experience if you only have joy all of the time and no pain you are not going to be happy you don't need drugs, you don't need alcohol, you don't need parties or festivals, you don't need fun. Fun is the vector from which Satan operates. Every time you look at something which is fun, it's all just hedonistic, there's no money to be made, you don't retire your mother, you don't help the world, you don't give to charity, you don't become stronger, you don't become wiser, you don't learn anything. Next time you think of what is fun, and someone goes, guys, come, it'll be fun. Sit there and go, wait, 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 wait. Will it? Experiences are unique. Jail was a unique experience. Bunch of fun. Unique. Life's not about fun as a man. Life is about doing the right thing because it must be done. Now, there are some things that are fun which can be earned. And there are some things which are fun that you could do which perhaps involve skill. Driving a supercar around a racetrack is fun. It involves skill. You have to be good at what you do. Cool. But a lot of this fun that is easily accessible to everyone because not everybody can get a Ferrari on a closed racetrack. I can. You can't because you're poor. You do not need fun until you've already reached the highest possible echelon. So this whole idea that you need fun in your life, you don't. Checking your bank balance at, in your house, not going out, you're on the pub, and seeing $20 million liquid is very fun. That's right. Much more fun than anything you could possibly ever do. So although it wasn't fun to sit around and accumulate that kind of wealth, it's the funnest thing in the universe in a way. For a man, your contentment will come from your purpose, and it will come from your competence, and it will come from succeeding objectives. It will come from completing difficult things that other people cannot complete. It will never come from the easily accessible hedonism, which you have confused for fun. If everybody can do it, you shouldn't want to do it. If everybody can go to that concert, you shouldn't want to go. If everybody can go to that club, you shouldn't want to go. But you should only want to do things others can't do. The only fun I have is doing things I know you're not allowed to do. Putting my Bugatti on an A380 and flying it around the world to a racetrack, which I've rented out for only me and only my friends to race around cars. You can't do that. I can. That is fun. But if you say to me, Andrew, come to this party, and I say, well, who's there? Everyone. Oh, everyone's there. Does that mean I need to go, right? It's the it's a event of the century. Ooh, everyone's there. If everyone's there, it's trash. So you need to sit there and go, all right, I'm being asked to do something fun. Who else can do this? And if it, the answer is everybody, stop. I clear my emails. I've trained hard that day. I've made a couple million dollars. 
I've spec'd a brand new car. I've checked on all the people I love, all the people I care about. I've donated some money to charity. My children are fed. Their mothers are taken care of. Everything is in order. Everything is in its proper place. That is fun. If you say to me, Andrew, skip a portion of that, skip a portion of that organization and professionalism so that we can go and do something that everyone else can do, my answer will be no. That does not sound fun to me. And the fact that you think that's fun shows that you have a severe mental deficiency. Okay. Stay away from it. You're only going to find actual fun through purpose. You're only going to find purpose through exceptionalism. So you need to become the best possible version of yourself in all realms. That's extremely important. The reason you are so unhappy is because you are trying to have fun. You're unhappy because you're trying to have fun instead of trying to become important. They are very different things. And you're never going to feel satisfied in your heart unless you become important. Please imagine. And being important is fun. But, uh, oh, it's absolutely fun. Please imagine. And I don't state this with arrogance. Please imagine for a second you're the most Googled man on the planet and you're a kickboxing world champion and you have hundreds of millions of dollars and you're built like a tank imagine how you feel when you look in the mirror nothing can match that and nothing can beat that when i tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with everyone agrees they go yeah that's probably true the people the five people you spend the most time with that's what you're gonna end up like they say yeah that's true and then they continue to hang around with people who they don't want to be why you had there has to be a point there has to be a point where you sit and go okay you're my friends etc etc i love you guys yeah we can talk whatever but I want a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. You wouldn't want to be, if you were to come hang out with me and you were in a room with me and my five friends, you'd feel, you'd feel self-conscious. You're right. You don't feel self with your friends. Cause you only, so you don't, you, you only, you only surround yourself around people that are on like your level of like, I'm with killers. I'm with killers. We're fucking monsters. If you were to come hang around with me and my crew, you would be self-conscious. And that self-consciousness would motivate you, or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. If you were to get in a room and you're the only person who ain't a fucking monster, you'd want to become a monster. That's life. That's humanity. So I say this to people all the time. If you know you're the sum of the five people you hang around with, why are you hang around with people you don't want to be? Brother does 500 push-ups. I ain't got to be the bitch at the house. I ain't got to not do it. So that, that's another reason the war room exists. My organization, the reason it's so competitive, is the reason we kick people out. You have to even, fight. Even, even if they pay, you're like, I don't give a fuck, get out. Right. I don't give a fuck, get out. I'm out. It doesn't matter. Everyone pays to join, you get kicked out anyway. You have to fight to keep in place. That's the whole thing. That's because that's how life was. If we were still in the animal kingdom, the lions that you see on TV, they weren't just born big lions. They had to fight other lions. They had to fight to get that antelope. They had to fight other animals, hyenas, jackals. They had to fight to be the boss. We're living in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But you know what? To some degree, it does matter. It does matter, and I'm gonna tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why. Because God dislikes you because you're fucking lazy. Start to work. Start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you'll become. God is unhappy with these people. And inside their hearts, they're unhappy. We talk about depression, anxiety, all those things you mentioned really earlier on this podcast. That comes from self-loathing. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. I don't feel depression. How can I feel depression when I'm the most powerful version of me that I could ever fucking be? How can I feel depression when I can squeeze my own hand hard enough to break my own bones? How can I feel depression when I've smashed and destroyed 68 people's faces in front of me? Men who thought they could test me in fair combat. How can I feel depressed? It's impossible. Watch your friends when they're on TikTok. How long can they even focus on a video before they have to change? Half a second, a second, Damn. maybe. All of your minds are broken. You can't even focus on anything anymore. Right. You are caught distracted to the point where you can't even appreciate the good things in your life. You're distracted. Your minds are broken. You need to rewire your mind and resist the slave programming. How? They have pro... I'll tell you how. First thing you have to do is identify. You have to identify what is happening to you. I use my mind to break the trap. What I do is I allow my enemy to manipulate me on purpose. And then I use my mind to break the trap and punish the perpetrators. I will sit on TikTok for a day and I'll just enjoy TikTok. 
And by the end of the day, I'll watch myself. How fucked, how quickly I'm looking to be entertained, how little time I give a video, how fucked up I am. And then I'll blink and I'll cure my fucking brain. You must allow yourself to be manipulated and you must fix it. All of it. You just talked about not appreciating the things you have. Then blink and cure your brain. It's not difficult. There's just no competition because everybody's fucking distracted. They're getting distracted by this, distracted by that, watching fucking Netflix, jerking off to Pornhub like fucking jackasses. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. But it seems that nobody fucking can. And that's how the people who run the world keep the world running because they have all the slaves exactly where they need them to be. Permanently distracted and semi-depressed. Working their asses off in jobs which will never satisfy them and never pay enough money. That's the matrix. Do what I'm supposed to do. It's, it's not a matter of how I feel or how I'm motivated. If I was depressed, it's impossible, but if I was depressed, my life would be and the day-to-day -day activities would be exactly the same as if I was ecstatically happy. You wouldn't be able to see a difference. I'd be up at the same time. I'd be in the gym the same. I'd be doing the same shit. Those are my duties as a, my duties to God. How I feel has nothing to do with it. Completely unrelated. How I feel is unrelated to my duties to God. They don't change based on how I feel. They're the same. And they will be completed because I refuse to fail God or my bloodline. You could take 150,000 of these people and, 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 sh and tie, travel back in time and stand them in front of their ancestors. And their ancestors who fought fucking saber-toothed tigers or escaped the, the Mongol hordes or managed to dodge bombs in the Second World War. All the shit they went through just for this fucking cretin to be born. And to look at him, look at him, who he is, listen to his life story, listen to what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, and they would feel nothing but fucking shame. Your ancestors did all that shit, all that struggling to survive, hunting, hunting and gathering, fucking avoiding enemies, anything it took, dying at age 30 from a tooth infection, all the crap they went through just for you to be born so you could smoke weed and jack off. That's what your ancestors died for. That's what they worked so hard for. You were born, if you were born 100 years ago and it was the 1920s, you'd be in some ditch in Northern France, living in the fucking mud, hoping not to get killed by a random sniper in some bullshit war you barely understand for four years. Then you'd come home and hope your wife hasn't been bombed. Yo! You understand? But that's the work. That's the world. The world has become ex exceptionally easy for a lot of men. It used to be a diff different place. Most men were cotton far. Most of us would have ended up in wars dying for fucking no reason. Yeah. Now we don't have to do that. So because we don't have to do that, men think it's okay to just become comfortable now. You're not supposed to be comfortable. You were never evolved to be comfortable. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. Right. And if you find make yourself uncomfortable constructively, it's very easy to be anything you want. I find it amazing that people will sit there and spend all their time upgrading that character, making as much money as they can, getting the best guns, getting strong, getting some hoes, meeting important people, getting the best car. They'll do all that in a game, but they won't do it in real life. I, I find that incredible. My life is GTA. I don't need to play a game for GTA. If I want a gun, I'll fucking buy it. If I want a car, I'll fucking buy it. I want a bitch, I'll get her. It's me. I am GTA. I don't see why people play the games. They play the games because they're scared of loss. Because if you die in the game, you get another chance. If you lose in the game, you get another chance. In life, you get one shot. Damn, that's... But if you get some balls, if you get some balls, that's what life is as a game. That's what life is as a man. This is one big video game. You get to upgrade your character. You're not born with any value. All these women that you just put me on with are born with value. They're pretty already. They're gorgeous already. They're good looking enough. Even if they're a five, someone's going to give a shit they exist because someone wants to fuck them. Where did that mentality come from? I've heard, I know your background story, I've heard, listened to tons of your interviews, I know the uh, big impact especially your father had on your life. Was there a single, or were there a handful of pivotal moments for you where your mindset just shifted? I know you've talked before about being young and seeing people driving by in flashy cars and it annoying you and not an annoying the people around you, but I I'm really curious to know where the, where the tape mindset came from? It's a good question. I think a lot of people build their mindsets around trying to feel good. 
So that's why we were talking earlier about people who want to uh, uh, ignore the idea of personal responsibility or self-accountability because they feel better if they pretend it's not a real thing. They feel better if they pretend everything's someone else's fault. A lot of people's mental model and how they view the world is based around them feeling as good as possible. So when you sit there and talk to somebody who has the mask on and they refuse to believe the, the, the elites are laughing at them, it's not because they can't comprehend the ideas, it's because they feel better if they don't believe that they are a clown to the elites. I feel better if this is really all innocent and it's really all about a disease. So people are try based, they're basing their mindsets around trying to feel good. I have always tried to base my mindset around absolute competence regardless of how I feel. And <clears throat> there, are, there are certainly disadvantages to that. There are times you're gonna be a lot more pessimistic or you're gonna be a lot more stressed or a lot more you know, pissed off about certain things and others. Yeah, that can be seen as a downside, but like I said, I use all of those things for unlimited motivation to propel my endless upward trajectory. But if you construct a mindset that allows you to be as competent as possible, as opposed to feel any different or feel better, then you're gonna naturally come to the conclusions I've come to. You're as competent as possible if you believe you can affect absolutely everything about your life. You're as competent as possible if you believe absolutely everything that's happened to you, whether good or bad, is completely your fault. You're as competent as possible if you believe the bad things that happen to you are going to allow you to work harder and become even better. When bad things happen to me, the first thing out of my mouth is good. Good. Andrew, they, they took $10 million out of the bank because they canceled you. Good. Good. That's just my response. Good. Andrew, this happened. Good. 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 Now now I'm really pissed. Good. <laughs> like, like it's, it, that, this mindset I've constructed allows me to be as fearsome a competitor as possible. It allows me to be a feared opponent in any realm of human endeavor, and that's, that's the point of a mindset. I believe there's only three reasons people are not rich. One of three reasons. They're either stupid, arrogant, or lazy. Stupid is actually the smallest category. Mm. People think, oh, you know, there's a lot of stupid people. There are, but I know a lot of stupid people with a lot of money, right? There's so much money in the world. To be too stupid to generate money, I think is less than 5% of the population. We're mm -hmm. genuinely too dumb to ever make a good wage. Then you have arrogant and lazy, and these are the two most common. Lazy because people just, oh, you know, but I need time to myself. Oh, you know, but it's the evening. Or, you know, it's hyper competitive. There are people who do not need times to themselves. There are people, there's an Indian in Islamabad, or there's a guy in Islamabad who do your job online for $3 an hour and he doesn't sleep. Mm. You're, you're going to lose, right? So if you're going to be lazy in any regard, you have to understand there are people like me who are billionaires who work 18 hours a day. When I finish this, I get into my car and I open my laptop and I walk on my way to my next appointment. I'm going to work all night till the day I go. When I go to sleep, I close my laptop and I'm asleep a minute later. I work. That's all I do. Lazy is a big problem because people go, oh, but I just want to relax. If you just want to relax, that's fine. Mm. But you're competing against people who just don't want to relax you're going to lose. And the last, and I'd say that's around, a lot of people have that element to them. A lot of people are lazy. That's about 50% of people. But the main reason people are not rich is because they are arrogant. If you were to take somebody who says, I'm doing my best, I'm really trying, and you were to get uh, an exact schedule of their last week mm -hmm. and find all the times they've wasted time, you'd say, look, you've wasted time, wasted time, wasted time, wasted time. You know what's actually amazing? Most of those people are not even self-reflective enough to go, you're right, I'm not trying my best. Mm -hmm. You know what they'd say? Well, I have to rest sometimes. Mm. Well, I, well, I have to have a social life. Well, I, they'd be so arrogant because mm. they're arrogant. I have to do my Facebook. Yeah, yeah. The rat, you'd even show them. Here's where you fucked up. Mm. Well, you know, I have to. Do, oh, you're crazy. Mm. And then they go back to being a loser. A lazy person thinks he's working too hard, and a successful person thinks he isn't working hard enough. Mm. And we're doing 20 times the work they are. Mm. And we're like, oh, I could have done more. I could have done this. Oh, I missed that today. Can't miss that again. But oh, I should have taken that call. I should have flown there. I should have. That's mm. you know, we have guilt about it. They don't mm. give a solitary fuck. Mm. And even if you pointed it out to them, they'd sit there and go, oh yeah, and they'd make some excuse for it. It's it's the brutal arrogance of people. Perhaps 50, 60 years ago, you could be a normal man with a normal job, have a normal life, and a normal wife, and a normal house, and a normal car, and be happy. But the world we are now living in is proving that being a normal man is nothing more than slavery. Being a normal, law-abiding citizen with a normal income and a normal wage, and one passport, and a normal life, is going to leave you depressed. So it's going to leave you, and you're going to end up fucking suicidal and miserable. This is what I don't understand about people, especially men in the world today. Why are they say, so worried about being afraid? Why are they so worried about, I was afraid every time I fought. Yeah. I fought anyway. Yeah. Like, I, I don't let fear guide what I'm going to do. I do what I'm supposed to do regardless of how I feel. So I don't see anything wrong with feeling fearful. I don't see anything wrong with feeling stressed or under pressure or anxious. All these things men are trying to get rid of. And I talk about men specifically. I gender this because I'm a man. I don't know how it feels to be a woman. But all these things that people are trying very hard to get rid of from their brains, 
I don't see why they need to leave. I will argue the point that if I feel anxious and pressured and stressed and fearful, I will get more done than if I was happy. I think if I was happy, I'd just be hedonistic and just wasting my time. I think that you get a whole bunch done with these negative connotations and negative emotions. And I think that life is suffering and pain and you're here to go through it. And you're and the sooner you get used to the taste, the more successful you're going to be. I have no interest in trying to change the flavor, my friend. The flavor of life is pain <laughs> and I will eat all of it. And it doesn't matter if they put me back in jail or not. I, I'm not sitting there going, how can I be happy in jail? I will sit in jail and say, yes, this sucks. It's supposed to suck. Yes, I'm not enjoying this. Yes, I'm anxious and paranoid. And yes, that guy might stab me. And yes, I can't sleep and I miss my family. And this is what's supposed to happen to me. And this is how I become the best man I can possibly be. And I'm going to succeed regardless. So if you're not the person who's waking up every day going, how do I improve my existence? Then nobody is. Mm. Nobody on the planet is mm. considering improving your one spin on Earth. No one else cares. Nobody else cares. So if you don't care, then you're fucked. So you need to wake up and care. And it's amazing to me. Like you're saying, how did I find my mentors? I just tried a bunch of them. Like when I had no money, I would try very hard to I'd listen to lots of different people or I try different things. And I wasn't, I wasn't scared mm -hmm. to invest in myself because I understand that, look, if he's taking time out of his life then I need to reward him for a financial. Mm -hmm. And I tried very hard and I listened and I paid attention and I was never lazy. I don't believe there's a person on the planet who pays attention tries their best, is never lazy, is on time, works hard, has a mentor, and is giving it his all, who isn't rich. I don't believe it. I think that if you do all those things, you're rich. And if you don't have any money, you're missing one of those key elements. Now you can fool yourself and you can fool everyone else and you can pretend you're doing them, but if you're truly honest with yourself, am I finding people who are trying to teach me what I want to know and am I trying my best? And the answer is fucking no every time. For you to become rich and successful is going to require pain and suffering. And you have to understand exactly what your dream life is to make the pain and suffering worthwhile. Think about it. Have you ever been to the gym and seen a person in fantastic physical condition? They're strong, they're ripped, they're large. And you say to them, how did you get so big and strong? And they say, I don't know. Oops, it kind of just happened. Or have you ever found a really rich man? Or a very successful man and said, how did you become rich and successful? And he goes, I don't know, bro. I just woke up one day and it kind of happened and now I'm living my dream life. No, there is a very detailed plan and roadmap. For you to become strong, you must eat a certain way. You must train a certain way. For you to become rich, you must earn money a certain way. You must understand exactly how you're going to make money. Whether you're going to be a public facing figure like me or a man of the shadows with millions of dollars. Unknown, but extremely powerful. You have to design your dream life. What house are you going to live in? Who's your woman going to be? Is she blonde? Is she brunette? What car are you going to drive? Have you even gone on the internet and specced your car? You can design your dream car right now for free on the internet and you can choose the color. You can choose the wheels. You can choose the car. Is it a Lamborghini? Is it a Ferrari? Is it a McLaren? How much does it cost to the dollar? You talk about your dream life. You don't even know what your dream life is. How do you expect to get to a destination when you don't know where you're going? The last thing I am is a hater. If you make a bunch of money and you pull up next to me in a Lambo, I'm going to be the guy who shakes your hand and says, gee, boom, you escaped the matrix. Congratulations. Welcome to the free world. That makes me happy. I want all of you to win. I'm not a hater. I'm not out here hoping I get to win and you lose. If you lose, you deserve to lose because you didn't take action. If you take action, you will win. This is actually why people are addicted to video games. Young men are addicted to video games because it mimics virtually what they ought to be doing in the real world. Yeah effort in to upgrade their character to become a better version of themselves so they can do better things than they could previously do and explore new areas of the map. The areas of the map which are Bugatti Convention, flying there on a private jet to sit with billionaires. The Grand Casino Monaco is a cool area of the map that you have, you have not unlocked yet, but it's great. Which requires you to upgrade your character as a person. You understand this in video games, and you do it in video games because it's very interesting to do. However, you don't want to do it in the real world. But in the real world, it's so much more rewarding. And I'm actually going to argue that we're living in one of the pe final periods where that's true. I'd say in a few generations, who you are and who your physical body is may not matter nearly as much. No, but it does matter today. A it, lot. Exactly. So that's why you should enjoy it while you can. Yeah. So you need to pick the low-hanging fruit first. And the starting block to all of these things is your body. I believe you lift, stretch, move, improve your body, try and train MMA, learn how to fight, get stronger, get bigger muscles. It's a fast track to self-discipline which will carry over into all other endeavors. And I would argue that is nearly impossible. In fact, how many people can say the gym saved their life? How many people do you know were depressed, started training, got in fantastic shape and weren't depressed anymore? 
It is very easy. The low-hanging fruit is your body and upgrading your body. That is the easiest struggle, which is never going to backfire on you and never going to be a negative towards any other facet of your life. And when I look at men who are physical specimens, I think everyone all naturally does this, but I'm going to openly say it. I respect them differently than I look at men who aren't. I have a different level of respect for them because they show me they have discipline. They show me they have motivation. They show me they're capable of doing difficult and hard things. Those are the kind of people I trust. They're not afraid of struggle. They're problem solvers. People who train are problem solvers and you need to become one and you need to become very, very adept at solving problems pretty quickly. I actually find it amazing that there's people out there who aren't in perfect physical condition. Guys, let me tell you all a, a newsflash. It's if you eat hard. right and you train hard, you look good. Yeah. It's like a biological certainty. It's almost impossible to be fat and look bad if you eat right and train hard. Your body will react and give you exactly what you want. So why don't you all look like superheroes? Do you not understand how intimidating that is just when they look at a group of people and they all look like superheroes and they can tell they're all disciplined, all hardworking, all dedicated, all physically strong? The struggle is what's beautiful about it. That's the most important thing. That's what you have to understand. Yeah, because no matter how rich you are, no matter how smart you are, no matter what family you're born into, you can only get into shape the same way as everybody else. So you could be Mark Zuckerberg, who's now in shape and he's a billionaire, but you can't say, oh, he bought it. He didn't buy it. He's just in great shape because he earned it like everyone else. You could be flat broke or rich as fuck. If you're in good shape, you had to earn it. It's as simple as that. So yeah, it says a lot about who you are as a person. First, you want to become as strong as physically possible. So you to be as strong as physically possible. Next, you want to try and make as much money as possible. Not even necessarily for the money, although money is extremely important because it allows you to take care of yourself. We talked about this before, but there's a challenge involved and solving that challenge is going to make you feel more satisfied as a human. Happiness comes from success and making money is success. You should try and make people around you smile and be happy. You should try and encourage positivity around you. You should be the kind of person that no one can really complain about their struggles around because they know that you're the person who's going to be like, why are you complaining when you could just simply fix it? Especially successful people. Successful people are uninterested in stealing because we'd rather everybody win and keep the friendship and keep the network and keep the positive orgones and keep the good karma than make a little bit extra money. So it's amazing what you see in the world. And if you become a person who is happy and successful and can take care of himself and adopt struggles, you're going to start finding those other people who do the same thing and then you're going to build a network and become fantastic. Live with men you're in competition with. So, you and your friends need to have friendly competition at all times. Now, you need to meet your friends and you need to have banter and competition around things that matter. Who's got the most money? Who's worked hardest? Who's discovered XYZ? Crypto? Stock? New way of generating income? Who's trained that day? Who has the most children? Put some actual competitions together that matter and start competing and being around people because you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everybody knows this. So why do you get some genuine metrics that will improve your life? You won't have time to stand around cooking meals if you're friends with somebody who works out for three hours a day, for example, because you're going to need to find three hours a day to train to beat him, which means you're going to have to just eat that rotisserie chicken as you do squats like a man should. Live with men you're in competition with. This is ultra important. Because you can measure yourself against your circle. If Tristan comes downstairs and says, I've done a thousand push-ups, I will do anything it takes to do a thousand and one just to annoy him. Because I know that he then has to do a thousand and two. And pissing him off is worth it. It's always worth it. And that's why you need to have that kind of competition. Get your act together. Get some genuine metrics. Things that matter. And once they're all put together, you're going to live in a naturally competitive environment, which is going to increase your testosterone level. It's going to prevent you from doing a lot of dumb shit. And the competition one's great, you know, because you can apply it to everything. There are a lot of people who are going to get, you know, kicked in the nuts and, and take a fall and they're going to let it beat them down. You know, Andrew's lost very important kickboxing matches. Did he mm. quit fighting then? Did I quit fighting when I got my ass kicked a couple of times? No, you don't. You just have to continue because in life, there are only winners and losers. There are no participation trophies. There's no, you know, stickers and everyone's invited to have a good time. You know, life is hard and everyone in life is actually trying to play the same game. If you're a sportsman, there's a small pool of people who compete at kickboxing, professional soccer, and the bigger the pool is, the more difficult it is. Well, life is the only game where every single one of us, 8.1 billion people is trying to play the exact same game. And the same game is there's only so much money in the world. There's only so many resources. There's only so much happiness. I'm going to try to provide for my family as best as I can. And whether people say money is not important or is important, everyone's part of this game. So winning is very difficult. 
and you have to keep trying when you get when you get kicked and you fall down and that's the advice i give to every every young man who listens to me the world has become ex exceptionally easy for a lot of men it used to be a diff different place most men were cotton fodder most of us would have ended up in wars dying for fucking no reason damn now we don't have to do that so because we don't have to do that men think it's okay to just become comfortable now you don't not supposed to be comfortable you were never evolved to be comfortable you're supposed to be uncomfortable right and if you find make yourself uncomfortable constructively it's very easy to be anything you want you talk about gta grand theft auto i know the game i used to play the old one on the playstation one when i was a child which one i haven't played any which one you talk about very, very, very first one Vice on city gta 3 yeah yeah oh oh the very 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 first one like 1994 okay okay but i don't i've never played any of those games but i find it amazing that people will sit there and spend all their time upgrading that character making as much money as they can, getting the best guns, getting strong, getting some hoes, meeting important people, getting the best car. They'll do all that in a game, but they won't do it in real life. I, I find that incredible. Like, I, I, my life is GTA. I don't need to play a game for GTA. If I want a gun, I'll fucking buy it. If I want a car, I'll fucking buy it. I want a bitch, I'll get her. It's me. I am GTA. I don't see why people play the games. They play the games because they're scared of loss. Because if you die in the game, you get another chance. If you lose in the game, you get another chance. In life, you get one shot. Damn, that's... But if you get some balls, if you get some balls, that's what life is as a game. That's what life is as a man. This is one big video game. You get to upgrade your character. You're not born with any value. All these women that you just put me on with are born with value. They're pretty already. They're gorgeous already. They're good looking enough. Even if they're a five, someone's going to give a shit they exist because someone wants to fuck them. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. You have to get up and do it. Just like a video game, you start with fucking zero. You have to decide if you want to complete it. You have to upgrade your character. So I find it amazing that men are going to play video games and fuck about and waste their time instead of upgrading their character. Everyone knows what to do. You know what you have to do. You're right. If you had to become the most dangerous, intelligent, respectable man on the planet, you know you're supposed to go to the gym. You know you're supposed to train, learn how to fight. You know you know all these things. You don't do them. That's your that's your decision. It's your prerogative. I didn't I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to do it all. I decided all of it. And every single man watching this can do the exact same thing. Which is why I have very little pity when I when I do these streams and people think I'm arrogant or I'm rude to people, or even to you earlier when I was making jokes and I've been joking with the girls You're saying good, drink bro. the soy latte. I'm, I'm not, yeah, of course, and I know we're only joking, right? But the point is that's a conscious decision you made. I would never make fun of someone who hasn't got a choice. I wouldn't make fun of someone born with one. I have a choice though. But if you if, if you've right. made a fucking decision to be less than you should be. Then I believe you should be mocked for that decision. I agree. I, I feel like, that. yeah, because like you're not living up to your full potential. Like it's your choice to basically not live up to your full potential. Completely. And me as a man, when I put myself through hell, when I have had such exacting, such stringent standards for myself, why would I then have less exacting, stringent standards on the people I meet? Damn. Why would I put myself through hell to be me and then meet someone who didn't put themselves through hell and then treat them like my equal? No, fuck you. I suffered when you didn't. So you're not my equal because you decided not to suffer. You have enjoyed comfort when I haven't, and that's fine. But don't expect me to look at you as my equal because you're not. I'll snap your fucking neck. Andrew, that's the world. Andrew, I have like a lot of friends around me. They're like good friends. I'll give them like they're real friends, but like they're they're incredibly like like lazy and they're and they have so much potential. Like they can be big, they could be getting rich, all this shit, bro. But like they choose not to. So, then, but it's really hard because I love them. They're my friends, and I came up with these guys, and they're so entertaining. I love them. They're my brothers, but like, I understand. But you have to. But there's something that's very always kind of confused me. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, "Yeah, that's probably true." The people, the five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're gonna end up like. They say, "Yeah, that's true," and then they continue to hang around with people who they don't want to be. Why? You have, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever, but I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. You wouldn't want to be, if you were to come hang out with me and you were in a room with me and my five friends, you'd feel, you'd feel self-conscious. You're right. You don't feel so with your friends. Cause you only, so you don't, you, you only, you only surround yourself around people that are on like your level of like, I'm with killers. I'm with killers. We're fucking monsters. If you were to come hang around with me and my crew, you would be self-conscious. And that self-consciousness would motivate you or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. If you were to get in a room and you're the only person who ain't a fucking monster, you'd want to become a monster. That's life. That's humanity. 
So I say this to people all the time. If you know you're the sum of the five people you hang around with, uh, why are you hang around people you don't want to be? Nah, it's true, bro. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why, right? I was, um, do you know who I Show Speed is? No. Uh, he's this other creator that's like, like obviously like in my, in my space. I, I was staying with him in September. And like, I would literally like be on my shit like, every day, like grinding, like at what I'm grinding, right? And like when he left, I had like no one around me to basically like kind of like all my all like like Everything. so it, it I shows. get it yeah, yeah. I, and, and 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 that's why I live in a competitive environment I live with my brother my cousin I live with men we have a big house I, we could all afford fucking ten houses each we live together on purpose and my brother does five hundred push-ups I ain't gonna be the bitch at the house I ain't gonna not do them right right I'm, so that that's another reason the war room exists my organization the reason it's so competitive is the reason we kick people out you have Damn. to fight to keep even even if they pay you're like I don't give a fuck get out like I don't give a fuck get yeah. out. Out. It doesn't matter. Everyone pays to join. You get kicked out anyway. You have to fight to keep you your place. That's the whole keep... thing. Damn. That's because that's how life was. If we were still in the animal kingdom, the lions that you see on TV, they weren't just born big lions. They had to fight other lions. They had to fight to, to get that antelope. They had to fight other animals, hyenas, jackals. They had to fight to be the boss. We're living in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you know what? To some degree, it does matter. It does matter, and I'm gonna tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul, and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man, and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why, because God dislikes you because you're fucking lazy. Start to work. Start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you'll become. Wow. God is unhappy with these people. And inside their hearts, they're unhappy. We talk about depression, anxiety, all those things you mentioned in the earlier on this podcast. That comes from self-loathing. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. I don't feel depression. How can I feel depression when I'm the most powerful version of me that I could ever fucking be? How can I feel depression when I could squeeze my own hand hard enough to break my own bones? How can I feel depression when I've smashed and destroyed 68 people's faces in front of me? Men who thought they could test me in fair combat. How can I feel depressed? It's impossible. Do you understand? Bro, you got like the best fucking mentality, like brain, like ethic I've ever seen in my fucking life. What the fuck? Everything you're saying is just like that you've said. It's literally facts. I agree with like 100% of everything. So why, why do we, okay, here's another question. Do you, have your, do you, do you notice that like human beings naturally, we don't care about things until it's gone. Like we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. Do you know that, you know what I'm trying to say? Like appreciation. Like, Correct. Why is that? Why do you think that? And do you do you feel that way? Like, are you very grateful? Are you appreciate what you have? Like, you know how to speak on that? Yeah, that's that's a mental trick. You have to rewire your brain. That's one of the things you have to rewire your brain to do. And the reason your brain needs to be rewired is because anyone who is watching this stream below the age of 30, your brain is already broken. And I'll tell you it's broken. I'll tell you why. Watch your friends when they're on TikTok. How long can they even focus on a video before they have to change? Half a second, a second. Damn. They, all of your minds are broken. You can't even focus on anything anymore. You're right. You are completely distracted to the point where you can't even appreciate the good things in your life. You're distracted. Your minds are broken. You need to rewire your mind and resist the slave programming. How? They have pro I'll tell you how. First thing you have to do is identify it. You have to identify what is happening to you. I use my mind to break the trap. What I do is I allow my enemy to manipulate me on purpose. And then I use my mind to break the trap and punish the perpetrators. I will sit on TikTok for a day and I'll just enjoy TikTok. And by the end of the day, I'll watch myself. How fucked, how quickly I'm looking to be entertained, how little time I give a video, how fucked up I am. And then I'll blink and I'll cure my fucking brain. You must allow yourself to be manipulated and you must fix it. All of it. You just talked about not appreciating the things you have. Then blink and cure your brain. It's a, it's a conscious decision. You're letting other people control your mind. Letting all distraction. The matrix is trying to control your mind. They're very good at it. That's what they do to control all of us. You have to break the trap. If you cannot control your own mind, let me make this, this point because it's extremely important. 
If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life. Because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. Right. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place, completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way, you're fucked. It is trained like everything else in life. It is trained. So if you find yourself not appreciating what you have until it's gone, then you must blink and cure your brain. If you find yourself unable to focus or concentrate on tasks, you must blink and cure your brain. If you find yourself unable to go and dedicate yourself to something you don't want to do, you must blink and cure your brain. Because all, all of our minds have been under constant assault for years. The, genu the way the mind functions, the way people interact, has changed so significantly in the last 10 years you wouldn't believe. If you go to a party today as opposed to a party 10 years ago, they look completely different. People are acting differently. People are on their phones now than they ever used to be. Even now, people will go to places only to get an Instagram picture even if they don't enjoy the place. Wow. It's all about pretending they're having fun as opposed to actually having fun. The entire paradigm of society and how we interact has now changed. What's fun? And I'm saying doing what you're supposed to do and fulfilling your duty and being proud of yourself mm -hmm. is fun. That's the only fun you need. You don't need the fun of trying to chase all this garbage and this hedonism and this black hole. That, that doesn't lead anywhere. <laughs> you get to a point where you realize, okay, this is never going to end. Am I going to continue to go down this path or am I going to turn around and just skip it all? Right. Because it, it only ends badly. And I think that's also one of the problems with Western society where the youth are obsessed with fun. If you look at other societies, the youth are not so obsessed with what's fun today. What's fun now? Mm -hmm. I need fun now. I'm bored. I want fun. You know, they're overstimulated, whatever it is. They're also selfish. They're also self-obsessed with how they feel. This teaching a, a, a whole society and teaching a large contingent of the youth that how they feel plays paramount over the world. If you feel sad, that's all that matters. Not, well, I feel sad, but it doesn't matter because I'm doing the right thing. I feel depressed or I feel stressed, but it doesn't matter because I'm dedicating myself. The, no, 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 no. What matters is how you feel right now, mm -hmm. which means they only want to be happy all the time. And if you're going to only chase happiness and you don't have any particular skills, you're going to end up just chasing hedonism and this is where you end up. And it's insanity. I think one of the largest tenets of masculinity for the largest period of human time is ignoring how you feel and doing what you're supposed to do because you're supposed to do it. We feel things, mm -hmm. but jobs must be done, whether we are happy or sad. I'm, I'm stressed probably six days a week. I'm pissed off six days a week, <laughs> but things need to be done. Right. So you just have to do them. I think we're, de we're designed to struggle a bit because the closer you are to struggle, the more sensible you are. Mm -hmm. But hard times create good men. Good men create good times and the good times create a bunch of weaklings. Think of that inside of, inside of the human psyche. Sometimes you need to be shocked. You need to be hammered with something. That's just how it goes. Because until then, you're like, ah, maybe. Ah, I'll, I'll keep it in mind. Yeah. Well, I got away with it. You yeah, keep yeah, going. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but right. when you finally learn your lesson, right? But there's a lot of these people out there who aren't being taught any lessons at all. And they're going to destroy society en masse because they have never had any kind of difficulty in their life. And what it, what is life without difficulty in the first place? What is life? What is the point of life without difficulty? I don't think you regret any of the bad things that happened to you. Not at all. Because it makes you who you are. Yeah. When you're in isolation and you're alone, you can go either way. You could either go crazy, like I saw a lot of guys do. Yep. And I don't demean them. Yep. Because isolation is tough. Yep. Those lights go out at night. Sometimes guys can't handle it. You saw a lot of bad stuff. I get it. Yep. It's tough. I'm dead set against isolation for young people. Yeah. They're young. It's going to be tough for them to survive. But I came out of there a lot clearer on who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. Yep. And so that time worked for me. You got to make it work for you. You yeah, got to go course. either way. Of course. And for me, it worked. I blame myself for everything. I, it's, everything's my fault. Everything that goes wrong in my life, I take full responsibility for. 100%. Because number one, if it was somebody else that did it, I should have known better. Yeah. I should have seen it. I should have not let it happen. Yeah. When you do, th that's a man, Andrew. When you can take everything on yourself so that the next time you don't make it happen, yep. it's such a benefit 
and people don't get it. Oh, you know, this guy did me wrong. He did, me, yeah, he did. Why did you let him do you wrong? 100%. My fault. I should have seen it. I'm smart enough. I should have known this. I've been through this. If you always take responsibility yourself, you're, you're 100% better in life. You can't learn lessons if you're blaming everybody else for what happens to you. Exactly. If you have that mentality, it also makes you stronger mentally, I think, to deal with the difficult things in life. Because if you go to jail and you believe, and you were set up, and a lot of people have, and you're like, oh, the system's wrong, this is wrong, this person lied, I'm a victim, poor me. I don't think that's the right position of strength. I think the, the, I think you go into jail and go, okay, that's all garbage, yes, it's a matrix attack, X, Y, Z. However, I could have done this, this, and this, and now it's my chance to do this, this, and this, so I don't waste the next few years of my life. And I'm gonna come out, and I'm gonna do my very best to be the person I know I can be. And it gives you a degree of fearlessness. Yeah. It gives you a degree of fearlessness, and that's, Probably one of the largest problems with society today is that a lot of men have become cowards. They're afraid to talk. Good times don't last forever. Neither do the bad times. Mm -hmm. It's all gonna, it's gonna come, it's gonna go. And you just have to be ready to ride the storm and enjoy it for what it is. And, and maybe when you go truly crazy, you can enjoy the bad times as much as you can enjoy the good times because there's no light without dark. I don't, I don't know about you, but my brother and I, our best stories, or being broke. In fact, being rich has only has any value at all because we were broke. If I buy a Lamborghini, I don't care. But if I buy a Lamborghini and then laugh about how I didn't have a car, now I want the car. There's no light without dark. There's no there's no joy without pain. I can't, the, sooner or later, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, tomorrow, who knows, I'm gonna be free from this place and I'm gonna enjoy my freedom again. When I was free, yeah. mm. but that's the beauty of life, isn't it? Yeah, no, you're right. And, 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 and I think with that understanding, you no longer fear the bad things. And then when you don't fear bad things, you can find something to stand up for and something to believe in. I, I don't care if I'm depressed. I have things to do and I am not going to allow people I care about to be at detriment. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm a full grown man. I have things to do. I was broke for the longest time. And that's when I actually became the person I am. I don't think money changes you. I think money amplifies you. I think if you're a, a real man and you get rich, you're a good man, like Trump, or like us. If you're a pussy and you get rich, mm -hmm. you become worse than ever. You become, yep. a, like we talked, a weak, dictatorial, insane, insane, evil person. We're surrounded by them. That's the right. So you need the you need all of the character building, bad times, being broke. Rich. You need all that before you're rich. The worst thing that can happen to you is you get rich at 19. Imagine a 19 year old boy who's filthy rich. He's yeah. an idiot. So, but but society's just got them all messed up now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they've lost vested interest in the future of themselves and society, which probably ties back into why people are getting away with what they're getting away with. Because they look at the politicians, they go, oh, it's a scam anyway, it's all I lie, who yeah. cares, it's all bullshit. I give up, I don't stand a chance anyway, I give up, I give up, I give up, I don't care. Let all burn. Let's make memes and make yeah, fun and of it burning. you a lot of that? I, that's all you see. Yeah. There's like, the world is burning, and instead of trying to put it out, let's just laugh at it burn. It's all just one big joke. Ha ha ha, it's all burning, oh well. Oops, who cares? There's a lot of that. You're trying to stay champ. Well, there's people coming for your belt, Rocky. And, you know, Mr. T's training and he's built different because he's hungry. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that hunger in our society no. anymore. It's all no. gone. So how long can we truly possibly compete? You go down, deeper down the rabbit hole, we can lie and cheat. How long is that going to last? Who knows? We're going to work hard and we're going to dedicate ourselves and our nation's going to take over because it's easy to become champ. It's hard to stay champ. Join our platform, visionversity.in, which will help you to be better version of your life. You will find your hopes, confidence, motivation, and like-minded people as talented as you are. We focus to bring all the craziest people into Visionversity to do extraordinary things in the world.